everybody, this is Brianna Rudder, and in this hair tutorial, I am going to teach you how to do a lace frontal wig and installation, step by step for beginners. The hair I am using is from Unice, and I used a 20 inch frontal, a 22 inch, 24 inch, and 26 inch bundle in the texture Malaysian Curly from Unice.com. Use coupon code UNICEHAIR44 to get a discount on your order right now. Click the link in the description to get this hair. Now there are quite a few hair products that you are going to need to achieve this style because this is an advanced hairstyle. But like I said, I'm gonna show you in a very beginner friendly way how to do it. So take screenshots of all the products so that it can make shopping very easy. Now they sent me four bundles of hair to show you guys how great their hair quality is. But I did not use the longest bundle. I only used three bundles and a frontal. So this is how their frontal looks fresh out the package. And I'm using a 20 inch frontal to create this style. Their frontal is free parting. So as you can see, you can part it in any direction that you want to. And also with the hairline, you are going to need to do a little bit of customization to make it look very natural for your hairline. So I'm gonna show you a very easy way on how to do that. But for starters, I want to show you whether or not their hair actually bleaches. So continue watching to see the results. So I'm just using 40 volume developer and some hair bleach to put a little bit on the strips of hair that I am testing. This hair that you now see me bleaching is actually hair from the frontal because I wanted to make sure to show you how well it lightens. And as you can see, with one application, the hair is so blonde that it is ridiculous. As you can tell, this hair colors extremely well. This is how much shed hair I got, and as you can see, I barely had any. And that's from actually bleaching the hair and running my fingers through some of the bundles. So now I'm measuring it to show you that it's technically true to length. And it's actually a little longer than I anticipated with the bundles that they've sent me. So you do get a little bit of inch or so when you actually order their hair. So now this is the frontal, as you can see here, that I'm measuring, and it actually went to exactly 20 inches. Now I'm gonna show you how you want to prepare your dome head with your dome cap. And I'm using a canvas this black head that you need to use when making wigs. This is the exact circumference of my head. Now what I'm going to do is show you how to pin down your frontal when you're actually sewing your wig. Now I wanted to make sure that I had an extremely snug fit. So I made sure to go a little bit past the actual hairline of the wig cap, as you can see in the front when I show you now that it's pinned down. So I just use pins to loosely hold it down where I want it to be, so that way I can easily stitch it without it forcing me exactly where I wanted to stitch my knots. And I'm gonna show you what I mean. So as you can see, you can still see the cap in the front. And that means that I'm taking off just a little bit of the circumference so that when I wear my wig, it's a very snug fit. Now to sewing down your frontal, you wanna make sure that you already have pre-threaded needles. I always make sure to start with about 10 pre-threaded needles so it can make working very quick and seamless. Because if you only have one needle, you're going to constantly have to continue to reload it over and over and over again. And that lessens the amount of time or actually increases the amount of time that it's going to take you to create your wig. Now when I'm stitching my knots, I like to do the double loop technique. So I like to twirl it around my fingers two times, or I like to twirl the needle around the thread two times. Then I pull it through to create my knot. So you're gonna make sure to sew your knots very close together going all the way around, making sure to go back and forth on both sides of the frontal. Don't forget to do that part. Go back and forth on both sides of the frontal when stitching so that way your frontal actually looks consistently from ear to ear. If you only sew one side and go all the way to the other side, then your frontal will look lopsided. So be sure to keep that in mind and make sure that all of your knots are tight together. And then I just seal off my last knot by forming two knots before I cut off the remaining thread. And this is how the back of the frontal looks after I finish sewing it down to my dome cap. Be sure that before you actually sew your wig, that the size of the head that you're using is the exact circumference of your head. The circumference is a distance all the way around your entire head. For me, that's close to 23 inches, so I'm using a 23 inch dome head. Make sure it's the same size as yours. So this is how my frontal looks in front, because remember, I want a snug fit, so I have more of the cap exposed so that I can trim it off at the end. So now that my frontal is all sewn on, this is how full just one bundle of their hair looks at the very back. Their fullness is crazy. 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and continue to sew in the other two bundles so that I can continue to finish off this look. Now when I'm doing my second bundle, I like to double up the track. What I mean by that is I like to unfold the bundle all the way out to be single track, but then I like to bring it together so that I have two rows. So the bundle that I'm sewing right now is the 24 inch bundle that goes in the middle. And I'm gonna finish it off with the last bundle, which is the 22 inch. So right now this is the 24 inch that I'm sewing with the double track method. And as you can see, I'm still doing my same knotting techniques, making sure to sew all the way to the side. Now as we get to the side, you're gonna stitch about five to six knots at the very edge of your wig cap. The reason why is because when you fold it back, you want that fold to be extremely flat as you can see here. So that way when you're wearing your wig, it doesn't feel bulky around your hairline. So I'm stitching that single track just a little bit until it joins back into two again. And then once it joins back into two again, I then continue stitching back going in the opposite direction. Now we're almost done and I'm sewing in the final piece of the 22 inch bundle right up against the 20 inch frontal. And I'm making sure to join those together. Now it's time to begin sewing down our elastic band. The elastic band is very helpful in keeping your wig very flat to your hair without it looking lifted. A great quality wig as well as hair should last you anywhere from a year to three years. So when you actually sew the elastic band down to your wig, even though the knots will tend to loosen a little bit over time from you sewing your bundles, the wig will still stay flat to your head. So I'm going through the strap first and then what I'm going to do is go through the band that's on my wig. Now there's two ways you can sew it down and they both allow you to have a very flat feeling to your head, but it depends on what your preference is. I like to sew my elastic band down to the band of my dome cap. You can also sew it down to the edge of your frontal if you so choose. And this is how strong it will look and this is how it should look right before putting it on your head. But before we wear it, you wanna go ahead and customize your hairline. This hairline would be able to fit some individuals, but not everyone's. So when you get a frontal, you wanna make sure that you customize it and I'm showing you a very, very easy way to do it. So you can choose to do it on your head by pulling random pieces of hair, or you can choose to put it on your dome head to actually customize it, which I decided to do that for the most part. So I'm using the tail end of my comb and I'm grabbing the smallest piece of hair, and then I'm gently pulling it from the lace. You wanna make sure that the pieces of hair that you grab are extremely thin. And when you pull them, you wanna make sure to do so gently because if you don't do it gently, it will cause you to have holes in your frontal from ripping too big of pieces off too aggressively. So I'm speeding it up as much as I can to show you a natural progression of where I'm pulling the hairs from as well as where I'm deciding to part my sections. You wanna go all throughout the frontal where you feel like it's just a little too thick for your liking. You want it to be close to your hairline, but if you want it to be very, very similar, then it's gonna take you a lot longer to customize. But because I'm making this beginner friendly I am not going to be bleaching my lace you can bleach your lace if you want to but for beginners I do not suggest it because it can allow for more error to happen I'm trying to teach you a way that you can make it to be wearable as soon as possible with just a little bit of customization especially if you are a beginner so this is how the front of my frontal looks right before I begin installing it Here's a before and after picture of the wig. Now this is my braid pattern. If you have very thick, very long, very big hair, then you wanna make sure to braid your braids very small. But because my hair is fine, I don't necessarily need to do that. So make sure your braids are braided small enough to have a very flat install look to your hair. So I'm putting on a nude cap on my hair and I rolled it back just a little bit to add some gel. Now the gel I am using is got to be glue gel. And you can choose to use whatever gel you want as long as it's very tacky. So this gel is thick and right out the bottle, it already has a slightly tacky feeling, which is what you want to use when applying hair gel. Some hair gels have more of a silkier feeling or application. Go for the ones that have more of a tackier feel to it, so that way your wig can stick down very seamless and easily. So now I'm using the rat tail of my comb to push away my flyaway hairs as I get ready to mold this cap down to my hairline. So now that my cap is on, I'm going to use the rat tail of my comb and I'm going to make sure to join the cap with my hair, using the pick part of the comb to smooth the gel as I make sure that it's sticking down to my wig cap. Now you may see some individuals put a lot of hair gel and go way far back on their hairline. That's truly preference. It just depends on how much hold you need for your wig to work for you. Now I'm using got to be glue hairspray so that way I can make it more sticky and I'm slightly blow drying it because you don't want it really wet. You want it almost dry 
dry or kind of in the middle between wet and dry before you add it. Now that our wig cap is molded down, it's time to use our scissors to remove the excess cap before applying our wig. Be sure that it's fully dry like I've said before and also follow the shape of your hairline so that it looks very natural. And one more thing, if you've been watching this far, I want you to write me a creative comment down below in the comment section, making a sandwich using emojis only. The tastiest looking or most creative looking emoji sandwich gets a heart and I will comment back. Now that the wig cap is done, I'm just gonna do a quick spin around to show you how it looks. And I did not mold the back, so this is how the back of your head should look before applying your wig. But before we apply our wig, I'm just gonna add a little bit more got to be glue. I made sure to save a little bit of cap when I was actually cutting it. So that's why I'm using a little bit of glue to glue down that last remaining trim of what I left behind. And then I'm just gonna add a light layer of hairspray as well. When cutting off the lace from your wig, make sure that you do not go into a straight line because it will make the appearance look very unnatural. You want to follow the curvature of the hairs that you pluck so when you put it on, it looks extremely realistic. Now I'm using some powder and you can use any powder you want. This was a powder I found at my local drugstore. So what I'm doing is I'm lightly applying it just a little bit of ways from my hairline because I wanna make sure that that area stays a little bit sticky right before applying my wigs. Now what I see some individuals do is they like to add cream foundation and it's truly up to the person. I didn't wanna add any cream foundation because I didn't want it to cause any clogging of my pores being that my cap is very thin. Now that my wig is cut, this is how you want to apply your wig. You want to grab the band, you want to put the band over your head first. And then once you have the band snug at the back of your head, you're going to grab the back of your wig and then you're going to slide it back into place. After putting your wig on in the back, the front of your wig should be further back on your head. You don't want it near the front just yet because you want to slightly guide it up very slowly to where you want to position it. Always position the middle first and then work your way from that point. You can use your fingers to hold it down or you can use a comb to help to apply it into place onto the glue. So do whichever feels a lot more natural for you. For me, I was first doing the comb and then I felt I had better control when I used my fingers. So the method at which you do it will depend on the type of hair extensions you use as well as the type of adhesive that you use when sticking the frontal to your hairline. Be sure to take your time on this part and be sure that you're not missing any steps. Be sure to go back and screenshot any products that I showed you so that you can have everything you need to achieve this look. Now I'm just going to do a little bit of customizing to my hairline. And you can choose to customize it however you want or you can leave it very natural. I didn't put any baby hairs in the front, I'm just slicking down the front, but at the very edges near my sideburn areas, I cut off a little bit of hair so I can slick it down with gel because I tend to like that look just a little bit better. So this is how my wig looks literally right after applying it and I'm putting a little bit of water on it so that way I can make the curls join just a little bit more from after sewing it. Now this is how it looks up close and now I'm gonna show you a very beautiful after look. But since my hair is so wet, I'm using a blow dryer to make sure to dry up the curls a little bit. And this is the finished result of my style. So if you absolutely love this style and you want to see more tutorials like this, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to use coupon code UNICEHAIR44 to get a great discount on your order. And I can't wait to see you all in my next videos. Bye-bye.